Hello and welcome to this first look exploring session, our second session looking at the Castle of Perseverance, a medieval morality play from around 1400, one of the earliest texts that we've done in these sessions. Uh, we have done the first session, which is very much uh, so far about uh, mankind being tempted towards sin and uh, being lured into the, the, the traps of the world uh, while the good angel looks on in despair. Um, but help is at hand, for soon the good will, will assemble a team, a crack team, to bring <laughs> humanity to heal, and, uh, and then the, the, the fighting over man's soul really begins. So, uh, to discover how that's all going to come together, uh, reading today, Good Angel, Caro and Ira today is sipping a cup of tea. <laughs> that was bang on time. Hi, <laughs> I'm Tamara. I'm an actor. I'm currently based in Germany and getting my first jab tomorrow. Yay! <laughs> Uh, reading Castitas and Balliol today is... Bryony, actor in Lincolnshire, and I think Chased Devil might be my rock band name. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Uh, reading Abstinencia, Detraccio and Invidia today is... Rachel Nicole, cat in New Jersey. <laughs> reading Confessio, Humilitas and Luxuria today is... Uh -huh. Lois, uh, luxuriating in London. Uh, reading Bad Angel, Solicitudo and Avaricio today is... Muted at the moment. Unmuted now, Sarah Blake from Germany. Uh, reading uh, Penitentius... Uh, Penitentia uh, Superbia as well is... Hello, I'm Lynn. I live in the northwestern United States. Uh, reading Caritas, Largitas, and the World Mundus is... Hello, I'm Helen Good, and as I'm reading Mundus, I am in the centre of the world, London. And reading All of Mankind, Humanum Genus is... Helen Scott, vaguely human, in Suffolk. And I'm your host, Robert Crichton, and I too will be reading parts because actually we're a bit tight for uh, turning room on some of these uh, these doublings. A lot of people are basically playing good people and bad people, and when the good people and the bad people meet, it gets a bit confusing. So I'm reading Gulla and Axid uh, Axidia. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, so without further ado, humanity has fallen into the trap of sin. Uh, all the seven deadly sins have uh, drawn mankind uh, into the, the, the world uh, where he's uh, presumably enjoying himself. Uh, and the good angel now steps aside and uh, and uh, the good uh, the good angel and the band angel will have a bit of a contretemps, and the good angel hopefully will now call for help. So mickle the worse, well or woe, that ever good angel was ordained thee. Thou art ruled after the fiend that is thy foe, and nothing set is after me. Will away, whither may I go? Man doth me black and bloody blue. His sweet soul he will now slew. He shall weep all his game and glee at one day's time. Ye see well all soothly in sight. I am about both day and night to bring his soul into bliss bright and himself will it bring to pine. No, good angel, thou art not in season. Few men in thee faith they find. But thou hast showed a bald reason. Good sir, Come blow mine hole behind. Truly man hath none chosen on thy god to greed and grind, for that should come a Christ's lesson in penance, his body he must bind and forsake the world's mend. Men are loath on thee to cry, or done penance for her folly, therefore have I now mastery well nigh over all mankind. Alas, mankind is bobbed and blent as the blind. In faith, I find, to Christ he can not be kind. Alas, mankin is soiled and sagged in sin. He will not blend till body and soul part a twain. Alas, he is blended, and this man's life is suspended, with fiends fended. 
Mercy God that man were amended. What? Man's angel, good and true, what? Why sayest thou and sobbest sore? Certes, sore it shall me rue if I see thee make mourning more. May any boat thy bale brew, or anything thy state has store? For all fellowships, old and new, why makest thou grouching under gore with pining points pale? Why was all this greeting gone with sore sorrowing under sun? Tell me, and I shall, if I can, brew thee boat of bale. Of bitter bales thou mayst me beat, sweet shrift if that thou wilt, for mankind it is that I greet. He is in point to be split, spilt, he is set in seven cents seat, and will set us till he be killed. With me he thinketh never more to meet, he hath me forsake, and I have no guilt. No man will him amend, therefore shift, so God me speed. But if thou help at this need, mankind getteth never other mead, but pain without an end. What, angel, be of comfort strong for thy Lord's love that died on tree. On me, shrift, it shall not be long, and that thou shalt the sooth see. If he will be acknown his wrong, and nothing hail but tell it me, and on penance soon among, I shall him star to gammon and glee in joy that ever shall last. Whoso shrive him of his sins all, I behate him heaven hall. Therefore go we hence, whatso befall, to mankind fast. And I go to humanum genus. What, mankind, how goeth this? What dost thou with these devils seven? Alas, alas, man, all amiss. Bliss in the name of God in heaven, I read, so have I rest. These loathly lordens, away thou lift, and come down and speak with shrift, and draw thee yearn to some thrift. Truly, it is the best. Ah, uh, shrift, thou art well benote here to sloth that sitten herein. He saith thou mightest to come to man's coat on Palm Sunday all betime. Thou art come all too soon, therefore, shrift, by thy fay, go forth, till on Good Friday, tent to thee, then will I may, I have none now else to done. Oh, that harlot is now bold, in vain <coughs> he bindeth mankind belive. Say, sloth, I prayed him that he would find a charter of thy life. Man, thou mayst be under mould long o'er that time, killed with a knife, with powders and frescas manyfold. <laughs> Therefore, scape thee now to shrive, if thou wilt come to bliss. Thou sinnest or sorrow thee and sense. Behold thine heart, thy privy spence, and thine own conscience, or certes thou dost amiss. Yeah, Peter, so do mo. We have eaten garlic every one. Though I should to hell go, I wot well I shall not gone alone. Truly I tell thee, I did never so tr evil truly, that other have done as evil as I. Therefore, sir, let be thy cry, and go hence from me. With point of penance, I shall him preen, man's pride for to fell. With this lance, I shall him lean, iwis, a drop of mercy well. Sorrow of heart is what I mean. Truly, there may no tongue tell what washes souls more clean for the foul fiend of hell than sorrow, sweet sorrow of heart. God that sitteth in heaven on high asketh no more ere that thou die, but sorrow of heart with weeping eye for all thy sins smart. They that sight in sinning in sad sorrow for her sin, when they shall make her ending, all here joy is to begin. Then meddleth no mourning, but joy is joining with gentle gin. Therefore, mankind, in this tokening, with spit of spear to thee I spin, God's laws to thee I learn. With my spud of sorrow swote, 
I reach into thine heart wrote, all thy bale shall turn thee to boat, mankind go shrive thee yearn. A seat of sorrow in me is set, certis for sin I sigh sore, moan of mercy in me is met, for world's mirth I mourn more, in weeping woe my well is white, mercy thou must mine state store, for our Lord's light thou hast me let, sorry sin thou grisly gore, out on thee deadly sin, sin. Thou hast mankind shent, in deadly sin my life is spent. Mercy, God omnipotent, in your grace I begin, but thou, mankind, have done amiss, and he will fall in repentance. Christ shall br him bring him to bower of bliss, if sorrow of heart lash him with lance. Lordings, ye see well all this, mankind hath been in great romance. I now forsake my sin, Iwis, and take me wholly to penance. On Christ I cry and call. Ah, mercy shrift, I will no more, but deadly sin my heart is sore. Stuff mankind with thine store, and have him to thine hall. Shrift may no man forsake. When mankind crieth, I am ready. When sorrow of heart thee hath take, shrift profiteth verily. Whoso for sin will sorrow make, Christ him heareth when he will cry. Now, man, let sorrow thine sins slake, and turn not again to thy folly. For that maketh distance, and if it hap thee turn again to sin, for God's love lie not long therein. He that doth alway evil and will not blin, that asketh great vengeance. Nay, Certus, that shall I not do. Shrift, thou shalt thee sooth see, but thou, mankind, be want thereto. I will now all amend me. And with the lines, I sh he shall not do, he shall not return back to the dark side. He descends from his platform. You can almost hear all the seven diddly sins going, aww. <laughs> um, and uh, as he uh, descends down to confession. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a fairly straightforward. Penance turns up with... Uh, uh, with a, a a lance to stab him with uh, you know remorse for his terrible, terrible sins, and uh, and yeah that turns him around. Uh, Angel should have called called in confessio and uh, uh, penitence uh, earlier. It would have uh, saved an awful lot of uh, awful lot of problems there. Uh, Lois. Well, he had to have something to repent of first. But uh, yeah, true. my favorite line is we've eaten garlic every one. I mean, that idea that we've all sinned, we're all just as bad as each other. <laughs> you know, the, <laughs> the image of everybody uh, reeking of garlic. <laughs> if only that was the worst sin <laughs> we had all committed. Um, that, that's why there's no werewolves appearing. Mm. Ah. <laughs> um yeah so uh, yeah it's a, it's a it's a slightly it, it's a slightly different um uh energy uh it's it felt like a much more sedate uh way of speaking than we had uh, <coughs> with some of the sins yesterday um uh things will heat up soon because you know this this uh not yet there's going to be a bit more of this sort of still calmness and and, and goodness generally uh, any other thoughts in the room now that we... Uh, the, it felt like everyone's bedded in a bit as well after yesterday. It was quite nice. Uh, any thoughts? Everyone's going, yes, I remember when I gave up all my sins. Yes. Uh, Bryony. <laughs> Just after my comments yesterday about how the, the other side was a little bit lacking, I think they, they could have come in a little bit more persuasively i don't think i don't think they've quite got up to the same level as the sins yet so hopefully they will oh but they've they've, they've got the lance of penitence or or whatever it is i mean it must be really long if they're up on a on a stage you know the, the penitentiary must have a whacking great barge <laughs> pole or something i'm i'm quite interested in the logistics of that how high is the platform how long would that need to be and you know is there a sort of big motion that goes you know ah um, I'm quite interested in how big, because this is a big arena show, how big all these reactions and performances are designed to be. 
Um, and of course, we don't have any indication of what any of those other characters are doing. Because people don't exit in this play. They go somewhere else. Uh, they don't really leave the stage. So what are all the seven deadly sins doing at this time? Um, and, uh, you know, more importantly, the, when Confessio and pen, Penitence go up to human and you know, uh, what mankind, how goeth this? What dost thou with these devil seven? Well, <laughs> one dares to think really what he's up to at that particular moment in time. Um <laughs> The stage imagery could be uh, uh, could be quite explicit. Um, uh, any other thoughts before we go on? Because there's still uh, there's still more to his uh, his repentance to come. Um, uh, Lynn. Yeah, his uh, mankind's turnaround between oh get away from me and um, oh yes I'm very sorry. It seemed really it seemed really sudden. So that it's always like that. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> that's, yes. that's that's a morality play for you yeah there's sometimes yeah. a bit of an argument but yeah there's there tends to be a road to damascus bing moment yeah. most of the time yeah uh and yeah at least they've got a visual signifier to go with it you know that there is a action happening it's not like it's just i have made a very persuasive argument thank you for your persuasive argument i'm <laughs> persuaded um which which is nice it's, it's nice we get something um, it, uh, Helen. Yeah, I mean, the, the few arguments are more persuasive than the spear point. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, coming at you very sharply. Um, yes, there, there is a moment uh, in, in, in so many morality plays where it's a bit like, uh, you know, when Perry Mason turns on the confession ray, you know, you're, you're in the middle of a trial and someone confesses for no readily apparent reason just because he's talked to them sternly. Um, it, 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 it has that quality to it. Um, my God, that's an old reference. OK, Lois. Yeah, well, the big argument is, you know, you're going to die. And because uh, a mankind says something like, come back next Good Friday. And in other words, I'll do confession once a year and... Uh, uh, and confession just says, you know, you might be dead before then. And uh, there are all sorts of ways you could die. And uh, I think that's part of what scares man. Mm. OK, let's uh, let's see what else happens now. He's descended down to the level of uh, of uh, shrift and penance. Uh, let's see what happens to mankind. Uh, mankind, climb down from the scaffold, please. I come to thee, shrift, all holy low. I forsake you sins and from you flee, ye shapen man a sorry show, when he is beguiled in his degree, ye bleaken all his plea. Sin, thou art a sorry store, thou makest mankind to sink slore, therefore of you I will no more, I ask shrift for charity. If thou wilt be a knower here, only all thy trespass, I shall thee shield for hell fear, and put thee from pain into precious place. If thou wilt not make thine soul clear, but keep him in thine heart case, another day they shall be raw and rear and sink thy soul to Satanas in ghastly glowing glade. Therefore, man, in moody moans, if thou wilt wend to worthy wounds, shrive thee now all at once wholly of thy misdeed. Ah, yes, shrift, I, truly I trow, I shall not spare for odd nor even, that I shall reckon all on a row to lash me up to lives leaven. To my Lord God I am a no that sitting above in high heaven that I have sinned many a throw in the deadly sins seven, both in home and hall. Pride, wrath and envy, covetise and lechery, sloth and also gluttony, I have him used all. The Ten Commandments broken I have, and my five wits spent him amiss. I was then wood and gan to rave. Mercy God, forgive me this. When any poor man gan me to crave, I gave him nought, and that forthinketh me a wis. Now, St. Saviour, ye me save, and bring me to your bower of bliss. I cannot all say, but to the earth I kneel adown, both with bead and orison, and ask mine absolution, Sir Shrift, 
are you play? Now, oh, Jesu Christ, God holy, and all the saints of heaven hand, Peter and Paul, apostoli, to whom God gave power to lease and bind, he forgive thee thy folly that thou hast sinned with heart and mind. And I, up my power, thee a soli that thou hast be to God unkind. Quantum pecasti, in pride, ire, and envy, sloth, gluttony, and lechery, and covetize continually, vita male continuasti. I thee a soil with good intent of all the sins that thou hast wrought in breaking of God's commandment in word, work, will, and thought. I restore to thee the sacrament of penance, which thou never wrought. The five wits misdispent in sin the which thou shouldest not. Quick quid gesisti, with eyes seen, ears hearing, nose smelled, mouth speaking, and all thy body's bad working, wicium quod cumque fecisti. I thee a soil with mild mood of all that thou hast been full mad in forsaking of thine angel good and thy foul flesh that thou hast fad, the world the devil that is so wood, and followed thine angel that is so bad. To Jesu Christ that died on rude, I restore thee again full sad. Noli pecare, and all the good deeds that thou hast done, and all thy tribulation, stand thee in remission. Poseus noli viciare. Now, Sir Shrift, where may I dwell to keep me from sin and woe? Comely counsel he me spell to fiend me now from my foe. If these seven sins here tell that I am thus from him to go, the world, the flesh, and the devil of hell shall seeken my soul for to slow into Baal's bower. Therefore, I pray you put me into some place of surety that they may not harm in me with no sin sour. To such a place I shall thee ken, there thou mayest dwell without in distance and always keep thee from sin into the castle of perseverance. If thou wilt to heaven win and keep thee from worldly distance, go to yon castle and keep thee therein, for it is stronger than any in France. To yon castle I thee send, that castle is a precious place full of virtue and of grace. Whoso liveth there his life's space, no sin shall him shend. Ah, Shrift, blessed moat thou be. This castle is here but at hand. Though the rapely will I tee, seek out over this sad sand. Good perseverance, God send me, while I leave here in this land. From foul filth now I flee. Forth to fair and now I fond to yon precious port. Lord, what man is in merry life when he is of his sin shrive? All my dole adown is drive. Christ is mine comfort. Hey, what devil man, with a sheet, what is draw now to holiness? Go, fellow, thy good gait. Thou art forty winter old. As I guess. Go again, the devil's mat, and play thee a while with Sarah and Sis. She would not else, yon old trat, but put thee to penance and to stress, yon foul, federal filly. Let men that are on the pit's brink forbear and both meat and drink, and do penance as him good think, and come and play thee a while. Yeah, mankind, wend forth thy way, and do nothing after his reed. He would thee lead over lands lay in dale of dross till thou wert dead. Of cursedness he keepeth the key to bake in thee a bitter bread. In dale of dole, till thou shouldst die, he would draw thee to cursed head. In sin to have mischance. Therefore, speed now thy pace pertly to yon precious place that is all grown full of grace, the castle of perseverance. 
good angel, I will do as thou wilt, in the land while my life may last. For I find well in holy grit, thou counsellest ever for the best. And sadly here, at this point, there is a bit of the text missing. We've had a mention of the Castle of Perseverance at last, the big castle in the middle of the stage that has so far not really gotten much of a name check, uh, finally, finally gets one. Um, we can assume that during the next bit, uh, mankind is met by uh, humility and patience and uh, charity, and that they presumably make some lovely speeches in the general direction of uh, all of mankind. So, yes, we've gone through uh, con confession, shrift, um, and, um, and uh, yes, uh, having been uh, forgiven, presumably, uh, he is now moving to somewhere where he is fortified against the sins of the world, literally fortified in the sense that there is a castle that he can go into. Uh, it, uh, the, these, these, these plays are very, very subtle in that way. Um, uh, any brief thoughts before we resume after the, the slight break in the text? Lynn? I, I do have a new favourite line. It's a little long for a t-shirt, but uh, let men that are on the pit's brink forbear both meat and drink and do penance as him and think and come and play a while. <laughs> so, I like the rhyme scheme and the sort of rhythm of it. and the, it's, it's an amusing sentiment. It's like you're not going to die yet. You can wait till repent till you're at death's door. Yeah, come, come on, we'll have some fun. So there's it's, it's lots of time, Bryony. So how strong is your castle on a scale of one to France? Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Which, which is why, um, mm. actually, before we went to recording, there's a question about, you know, whether there's a source for this uh, text, whether it's a translation of something. Um, you know, the, the, it's an interesting question as to direction of travel in terms of texts. Uh, uh, there's a, I, I suspect there's an awful lot of influence uh, coming from the continent for a lot of these texts. Um, and some of them may be direct translations of things in Norman French. Uh, we do have surviving uh, texts in both English and Fre uh, French um, uh, from from slightly earlier than this, um, and we do have uh, text within the, uh, the the borders of England that are in explicitly just in, in Norman French. So um, that that might be a line that's a reference to a, a source of this play is not impossible, or just the French built really great castles. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. You know, it's presumably that's a that's a known thing. You know, there's some pretty pretty impressive fortifications. Um, a Lynn. This is this is four hundred years after the conquest, but mm. um, I I have heard that the English did not build monumentally in dressed stone, so that is so that was a new thing that the French brought over is is masonry basically. So maybe that maybe the French were um famous for uh, strong castles because that was a technology they brought to to uh, Britain when they in 1066. Mm. Yeah, and there, there may be maybe a sentiment that lasts beyond its uh, its sort of practical reality by the time this play comes to be written or for that matter uh, rewritten for uh, distribution. I mean, it may there may be an earlier iteration of this play that, uh, or versions of this play that existed prior to this document coming into existence. Um, Alan, yeah, just a quick question. You, we've said that this piece is circa fourteen hundred. Hmm. My recollection of the regnal line is um, hazy. I'm sure someone knows roughly which monarchs we're talking about at yeah. this period. This, yeah, this um, is right about the time that Henry IV deposes <clears throat> the second. Yeah. Uh, Agincourt's 15 years away. Yeah. Uh, though whether that has a, any meaningful connection with any of, the, uh, any of these plays, these plays tend to exist outside of uh, most social events. There are a few things that it does indicate uh, that these plays do reference, uh, but we may get to those things later on in the text. Um, there, there are some events that are, are too large, even for, uh, even for this kind of monumental drama, not to acknowledge. Uh, other thoughts, Helen? Yeah, sorry, just going back slightly on that. If we think of um, this play as being referencing Edward III's campaigning in France, 
as being the where the main battling was going on just in the period in the 20 years or so before the play was written, then all the strong points would be in France rather than in in um, in 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 England because the the latest military engineering would all have been in France because that's where the battles were the fighting was okay any other thoughts before we move on uh no. OK, so we can assume that humility has given a lovely speech welcoming humanity. We can assume patience has uh, made a lovely speech. Um, and now it's time for charity. Uh, we don't know whether this is the beginning of their speech. It looks like it probably is. Uh, so, uh, Caritas. To charity, man, have an eye. In all thing, man, I read, all thy doing is as dross is dry. But in charity thou dieth thy deed. I destroy away envy. So did thy God when he gan bleed. For sin he was hangen high, yet sinned he never indeed. That mild were mercy well. Paul in his pistol putteth the brief, but charity be with thee chief. Therefore mankind now belief in charity for to dwell. In abstinence lead thy life, take but skillful reflection. For gluttony killeth without, without a knife, and destroyeth thy complexion. Whoso eat or drink over blithe, it, it gathereth to corruption. This sin brought us all in strive, when Adam fell in sin down fro par precious paradise. Mankind lair now of our lore, whoso eat or drink more than skillfully his state a store, I hold him nothing wise. Mankind, take keep of chastity, and move thee to maiden Mary. Fleshly folly, look thou flee at the reverence of Our Lady. That courteous queen, what did she? Kept her clean and steadfastly, and in her was trust the Trinity. Through ghostly grace she was worthy, and all for she was chaste. Who's kept him chaste and will not sin, when he is buried in bank's brim, all his joy is to begin, therefore to me take taste. In busyness, man, look thou be, with worthy works good and thick, to sloth, if thou cast thee, it shall thee draw to thought is thwick. It putteth a man to poverty, and pulleth him to pain's prick. Do somewhat alway for love of me. Though thou shouldst but thwit a stick, with beads sometime thee bliss, sometime read and sometime write, and sometime play at thy delight. The devil thee waiteth with despite, when thou art in idleness. In largety, man, lay thy love, spend thy good as God is sent, in worship of him that sit above. Look thy goods be dispent. In dale of dross when thou shalt drove, little love is on thee lent. The skeletons shall say it is her behove to make us merry, for he is went that all this good gan owe. Lay thy treasure and thy trust in place where no rugging rust May it destroy or dross to dross, nay dust, but all to help of soul. Ladies in land, lovely and light, liking lilies, ye be my teach, leech. I will bow to your binning bright, true tokening ye make me leech. <clears throat> Dame Mignus, in your might, I will me arrive and throw wicked wretch. All my purpose I have pint, patience to be to done as ye me preach. Through wrath ye shall me keep, charity ye will to me intend, for foul envy ye me to end. Man's mend ye may matter mend, whether he wake or sleep. Abstinence to you I tryst, from gluttony ye shall me draw, in chastity to live in me list. That is Our Lady's law. 
busyness, we shall be cissed, sloth. I that forsake thy sleeper sore, largety to you I trust, covet eyes be to done of drop door. This is a courteous company. What should I more moans make? The seven sins I forsake, and on these seven virtues I me take. Maiden meekness, now mercy. Mercy may mend all thy moan. Come in here at thine own will. We shall thee fiend for that fro thy foe, if thou keep thee in this castle still. Cum sancto sanctus eris et ceterra. And uh, humanity will enter the castle of perseverance. Stand herein as still as stone, then shall no deadly sin thee spill. Whether that sins come or gone, thou shalt with us thy bowers bill. With virtues we shall thee vaunts. This castle is of so quaint a gin, that whosoever hold him therein, he shall never fallen in deadly sin. It is the castle of perseverance. Que perseverarerit usque in finem, hic salvus erit. And they all sing Eternal God, uh, King So High. Uh, and so lovely song time, everyone, as he's in the castle. Now blessed be Our Lady of Heaven Empress. Now is mankind from folly fall and is in the castle of goodness. He haunteth now Heaven Hall that shall bring in him to heaven. Christ that died with Dian Dos, keep mankind in this castle close and put all way in his purpose to flee the sins seven. And here we can infer essentially a, a, an act break if we want to think of it that way. This is a, a logical point where uh, it, there's a moment of triumph, there's beautiful singing, uh, mankind has entered the castle, yay, we finally used the castle. Um, it, it, the castle has a use, this is why nobody's been allowed to go into the castle. Um, and uh, yes, uh, uh, this is the castle of perseverance that stands in the midst of the place. But let no man sit there for uh, letting it uh, sit for there shall be the best of all. So, uh, yeah, uh, we've had seven deadly sins. Now we have the seven virtues. Whom two have gone missing. Well, well, they, they, they did get a bit of, they, uh, the humilitas got a bit of a bit of a. Uh, dialogue um, but yes they basically all make a lovely speech and he says how lovely they are and they will defend him Lynn yeah just a, I don't know what to make of this but I noticed that the virtues uh, who are all you know the converse of the seven deadly sins seem to be female he addresses them as ladies mm. and the uh, the sins I, I got the impression except for lust were were male so i i do not know what to make of that that's just something to notice mm. yes there's all sorts of uh questions about how they're they're all functioning in that sense um yeah and the the, the way there's some interesting there's some interesting issues with chastity um and uh, and and uh, discussion points the for all i think of the virtue the way the virtues are are personified there uh Bryony, then lois trying to remember all the way back to yesterday because that's how bad my memory is at the moment i might be wrong but was it not a little bit more dynamic yesterday where there was a little bit more back and forth going on with him and the when the sins were having their sort of 15 minutes um whereas this has just been bam 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 be good be good yeah, it's like i say it's i just don't feel like they're like the this the virtues are as compelling the the good side has not won me over yet yeah the the, the with, with the seven deadly i mean it's all very schem, uh, schematic uh it's all very laid out in very specific ways um but the last time you got a long speech two lines of uh tell me more about your sin and then two lines saying yes we're in um uh, whereas <laughs> here you're right it's just bam 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 straight in um uh lois yeah, I would imagine a lot of this is done through costume and props. I mean, they probably all have symbolic things they're carrying. And, uh, you know, the sheer beauty of it might be some sort of counterweight to the, the look of the vices. But the, uh, the gender thing is interesting. I mean, all these abstract nouns would be feminine in Latin. Uh, so it's not surprising that the virtues are feminine. But I mean, the, the words for the vices are also uh, feminine and, and they are treated as male. I think this goes back to something called the pseudomachia, doesn't it? I mean, uh, Oh, um, yes. 
Yeah, the psychomachia, the, mm. the, the spiritual battle, uh, which, which is what terribly early, uh, and of course in Latin, but it's the same idea. I mean, each sin has its opposite virtue and they, they fight it out. Yeah, so the, in, in the psychomatica, uh, matica, uh, they, um, the, the, the battling that goes on is incredibly literal and also, uh, in comparison with this, incredibly violent. It is a text that is delights in people ripping each other's throats out and the good people are doing the rip they 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 get it it's 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 a very early christian text and you can tell it's it's a much more fundamentalist text um it is it was not a pleasant read when i thought oh that'll be something i could use to try and help my learn latin that'll be fun no it wasn't it was like reading an isis uh, isis document it was absolutely horrific um so um yes it's a bit like this um, and it may be one of the, the major inspirations for this kind of uh, thing. But yeah, there's there's a quite a big tonal difference. <laughs> Just throwing that in. Sorry, I'm still slightly traumatized by trying to do that, uh, that exercise. Um... <laughs> oh, I'm impressed that you tried it. Wow. <laughs> yeah, uh, never again. I'll, I'll do Plautus instead. It's much, much more fun. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's not very long. It's actually, um, and it's interesting to look at. But yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend it for uh, for uh, for anyone. Uh, yeah. So, um, what were we talking about? We were saying things. Words were being said. And, I went off on a tangent. Yeah. While making the the virtues look more interesting, perhaps. I think it's got to be done visually. <laughs> Well, I think also the the cue that we've got song following that there might be music and other mm. elements going on here that this is feeling more like a religious ceremony this element because we've just followed on from uh, someone being shriven, mm. so it may be that this is playing on a sort of more atmospheric note rather than the bam crash mm. thunder of of the 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 more demonic side of things, mm. and it's a moment of stillness as well before we get into the next unit of action, which should be, as I've just hinted, slightly more dynamic. Um, Helen. Yeah, I think that et cetera mm. um, indicates that uh, there is something there, possibly from um, something known, mm. uh, which begins cum sancto sanctus eris, uh, that could be quite uh, uh, quite substantial and could be chanted or sung. Mm. Yes, and there's the, there are some Latin tags that um, uh, sometimes they're just sort of stage notation, you know, notations of where you might find useful um, uh, glosses on what's going on from uh, pertinent texts. And sometimes they may be indicators of, of, of other things that should be going on on stage. It's not always clear. But yes, I, that's a very good point. Uh, other thoughts or questions uh, before we go into our next unit of action? I think we can call it that. Some people do actually differentiate this into scenes and in some uh, printings this is called part two. Um, but I wouldn't myself go that far. Uh, OK, so let's go in back to the dark side. And again, these people have not necessarily entered. They've just not been necessarily saying anything. Uh, they may not have exited. They may have been here the whole time. I assume they're not heckling. Uh, so, bad angel, you're going to uh, basically bring in the uh, bring in all the bad people. Nay, by Baelor's bright bones, there shall be no while dwell. He shall be won from these wounds with the world, the flesh, and the devil of hell. They shall my will erick for sin seven, those kings three, to mankind have enmity. Sharply they shall help in me this castle for to break. How? Flip a gibbet, backbiter. Yearn our message, look thou make blithe about, look thou bear. Say mankind his sins hath forsake. With yen wenches he will him wear, all to holiness he hath him take. And heart it doth me dear, the boast that those mothers crake, my gall ginneth to grind. Flip a gibbet, run upon a rash, but the world, the fiend, and the flesh, that they come to fight and fresh to win again mankind. 
I go, I go, on ground glad, swifter than ship with rudder. I make men mazed and mad, and every man to kill another with a sorry cheer. I am glad, by St. James of Gales, of shrewdness to tell in tales, both in England and in Wales. And faith, I have many a fear. And uh, the attractor goes to Belial, to Satan. Hail, set in thine cell. Hail, ding devil in thy dell. Hail, low in hell, I come to tell tales to tell. Backbiter boy, away by halts and hoth. Say now, I say, what tidings? Tell me sooth. Teneful tales I may thee say, to thee no good as I guess. Mankind is now gone, mankind is gone now away into the castle of goodness. There he will both live in and die, in dale of dross till death him dress. Hath thee forsaken, forsooth I say, and all thy works more and less? To yon castle he gan to creep, yon mother meekness, sooth to sane, and all ye maidens on yon plain, for to fright to fighten they be full fain, mankind for to keep. And they call forth some more of those uh, lovely uh, 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 sins, pride, envy, and wrath. Sir King, what wit? We be ready throats to cut. Say, gadlings, have ye hard grace, and evil death mote ye die? Why let ye mankind for you pass into yean castle for us away? With teen I shall you tay, harlots at once, for this wones, by Belial's bones ye shall obey. Yes, and uh, Satan is not very happy. They let him out of his uh, grasp, so uh, Satan beats them to the ground. Big physical actions. Yeah, for God, this was well go, thus to work with backbiting. I work both rake and woe, and make each man other to ding. I shall go about and make and mow wraps for to rout and ring. Ye backbiters, look that ye do so. Make debate about and to spring between sister and brother. If any backbiter here be laughed, he may leer of me his craft. Of God's grace he shall be raft in every man to kill another. Hail, king, I call. Hail, prince, proud, cracked in hall. Hail, hand in hall. Hail, sir, king, fare thee befall. Boy backbiting, full ready in robes to ring, full glad tiding by Belial's bones I trow thou bring. Yea, for God, out I cry on thy two sons and thy daughter young. Glutton, sloth, and lechery hath put me in great mourning. They let mankind gone up high into yean castle at his liking. Therein for to leave and die with those ladies to make ending those flowers fair and fresh. He is in the castle of perseverance and put his body to penance. Of hard hap is now thy chance. Sire king, mankind's flesh. And so the calls go out to gluttony, sloth and lechery. Uh, say now thy will, sir flesh, why criest thou so shrill? Ah, lechery, thou Gald mare, and thou glutton, God give thee woe, and vile sloth, evil moat thou fair. Why let ye mankind fro you go in yon castle so high? Evil greys come on thy snout. Now I am dressed in great doubt. Why me had ye looked better about? By Belial's bones ye shall abide. And yes, the flesh is not happy with them either, and he beats them about the place. Now, by God, this is good game. I, backbiter, now bear me well. If I had lost my name, I vow to God it were great dell. I escape these shrews to mickle shame. It rappeth on other with routing reel. I, backbiter, with false fame, do break in and breast in hoods of steel. Through this country I am now. Through this country I am no. Now will I gin forth to go and make covetous have a na knock or two, and then I wis I have to do my devour as I trow. And yes, it does look like uh, yes, it is still you. Yes, uh, don't worry, that's uh, that's that's not an error. 
Hey. You've just gone to the world. You've just moved location <laughs> between the previous speech. So Dutrecio is basically going from platform to platform where uh, the various uh, sins and their masters are are, are available. Hail, stiff and stound. Hail, gaily girt upon the ground. Hail, fair flower I found. Hail, sir world, worthy in weeds wan. Backbiter in rout. Thou tellest tales of doubt so stiff and so stout. What tidings bringst thou about? Nothing good that shalt thou weet. Mankind, sir world, hath thee forsake. With shrift and penance he is smate, and to Yenin castle he hath him take, among Yenin ladies white as lake. Lo, sir world, ye moan a grease, that he be served on this weas. Go play with you, sir covetise, till his crown crake. And they blow on a horn to raise the last sin covetous. <laughs> Bowling bowed, tell me why blow ye so loud? Lewd, loss all the devil thee, Bren, I pray God give thee a foul hap. Say, why lettest thou mankind into ye castle for to scape? I trow thou guinness to rave. Now for mankind is went, all our game is shent. Therefore a sore driving dent, harlot thou shalt have. And he beats him. Mercy, mercy, I will no more. Oh, thou hast me wrapped with ruly routs. I snour, I sob, I sigh sore. Mine head is clattered all to clouts. In all your state I shall you store if ye abate your dense doubts. Mankind that ye have for law, I shall do come out from yon scouts to your hend hall, if ye will no more beat at me. I shall do mankind come out free. He shall forsake, as thou shalt see, the fair virtues all. Have do then, the devil thee tear. Thou shalt be hanging in hell, Hearn. Believe my banner up thou bear, and besiege we the castle yearn. Mankind for to steal. When mankind groweth good, I, the world, am wild and wood. These bitches shall blare in here, in her blood, with flaps fell and feel. Yearn, let flapper up my fane, and scape we shame and shond. I shall bring with me those bitches' bane. There shall no virtues dwellen in my land. Meekness is that mother that I mean. To her I brew a bitter bond. She shall die upon this green, if that she come all in mine hand. Yeen wrap a kiss with all her rumps. I am the world. It is my will. The castle of virtue for to spill. How with high upon yeen hill, ye traitors in your trumps and here they go to the castle we'll pause there because there's a lot going on here so we have this big um running around all the place it, i don't know how, precisely how all the seven uh sins ended up back at their start point it's like someone reset the game from earlier because i thought they'd all ended up on one scaffold but they seem to have got bored and sauntered off and and mended up back at their starting point uh maybe not it looks like they all fell asleep they they, they had a, a lovely time uh with mankind and then uh, and then he got away uh, and they all get beaten and there's a constant running around and the, the way that the uh, backbiter is being used as this messenger to travel from place to place um, in this way. Um, and they're all gearing up to attack the castle and that's where the language and the genders really um, uh, starts to matter um, because the way they're using language now is being, uh, is being uh, quite, uh, becoming much more aggressive. Um, and, uh, and and working in a very different way. Thoughts from the room on that or any other things? Because it's a very different scene so far uh, to what we've had before. Much less sedate. Uh, lots of things are going on. Rachel, then Helen. Uh, no, it's just a point 
that uh, I just find it interesting that the gendered um, language has lasted so long in the English vernacular and that that's something, you know, uh, that I think a contemporary audience out of all these words is most understandable, if that makes sense to somebody who wasn't um, experienced with this this language um, and the spoken language, that that's still clear as to what people mean when they say it. Mm. Uh, especially as there are some words that uh, I haven't necessarily fully translated, which uh, also are derogatory in the same uh, same fashion. So uh, there are there are there's there's a lot being placed in this dialogue now that's being addressed at the virtues. Uh, Helen. Yeah, I, I think it's following on from that. It is extraordinarily difficult to read it when you don't actually understand what you're saying. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm desperate for a glossary because, you know, you get the impression that Mundus is cross, but a lot of the, the, the cursing and, and carrying on, they're nice words, but I don't know what they mean or how they should be said. Uh, other thoughts? Uh, Brownie? Um, just with, with sort of upping the ante each time here like we started off with just some persuasive words a bit of carousing and he's like yeah okay i'll be a sinner and then we had poking with a lance and death threats and then next up is just brutal beatings it would seem i i can't wait to see what the next form of persuasion could be mm. um uh sarah there's definitely a sense that we're building to something. I assume it's going to be an almighty battle. But there's, yeah, the, the pace is, has just picked up. And like Bryony said, we're just, it's it's intensifying, isn't it? It's it's suddenly, um, we had this kind of lovely contemplative moment, which was probably very beautiful, like, like Lois was saying with the costume. It's probably very beautiful and tranquil and kind of quite spellbinding in its stillness. And now all of a sudden, the pace has changed completely and we're, we're, we're building to something quite exciting. Oh, that's the impression it gives. Mm. Uh, uh, and uh, so, yes, we're going to go to, uh, 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 eventually, an, an attack, or at least the 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 building up to an attack. So an awful lot of uh, people uh, throwing insults uh, at each other broadly. Ha come and have a go if you think you're hard enough is uh probably uh where we're... broadly speaking where we're going um so they're all going to go to the castle Belial uh uh gets to go in first and i'm going to be one of the uh the the, the sins in a moment now so that's uh well, i get to be two i think uh, or at least people in uh, that general area I hear trumps trebling all of teen. The worthy world walketh to war, for to clive in yon castle clean. Those maidens mends for to for to mar. Mean, means for to mar. Spread my pennon upon a preen, and strike we forth now under star. Shapeth now your shield's sheen, yeen scald scouts for to scar. Upon yon green grease, busk you now, boys, believe, for ever I stand in mickle strive, while mankind is, clean, is in clean live. I am never well at ease, make you ready all three, bold battle for to bead, to yon field let us flee, and bear my banner forth on breed, to yon castle I will tee, those mamming mothers shall never have her meat shall have shall have her mead but they yield up to me with bitter bales they shall bleed of her rest i shall him reave in woeful waters i shall him wash have done fellas and take your trash and wend we thither on a rash that castle for to cleave Now, 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 go now, on high hills let us hout 
for in pride is all my prow, thy bold banner to bear about. To Goliath I make vow, for to Shetan yon each scout, on her arse, ragged and row, I shall both clatter and clout, and give meekness mischance. Belly old bright, it is thine hest that I, pride, go thee nest, and bear thy banner before my breast with a comely countenance. I hear an hideous hooting on hit. Believe, bid my banner forth for to blaze. When I sit in my saddle, it is a selk of sit. I gape as a gogmagog when I begin to gaze. This worthy wild world, I wag with a wit. Yon rapukis I rubble and all to raise, both with, sh with shot and with sling I cast with a sl slight, with care to yon castle to kraken and to crease in flood. I am man's flesh, where I go I am man's most foe, e wis, I am every woe when he draweth to good. Therefore, ye bold boys, busk you about. Sharply on shields, your shafts, ye shiver. And lecherly, lechery ledron, sheet thou a scout. Help we mankind for yon castle to kever. Help we mun him win. Sheet we all at a shot with gear that we can best note to Ash mankind for ye coat into deadly sin. Lo, Sir Flesh, how I fare to the field with a faggot on mine hand for to set an on a fire. With a wreath of the wood well I can be wield. With a long lance these lossels I shall leer. Go we with our gear, those bitches shall blaken and blodder. I shall make in such a powder, both with smoke and with smodder, they shall shitten for fear. And they descend to the place. As arms as an herald, hey now, I hout. Devil, die thee as a duke to do those damsels dote. Balliol, as a bold boy thy brood I bear about. Help to cash mankind from caitiff's coat. Pride, put out thy pennon of rags and of rout. Do this mother meekness melt into moat. Wrath, prefer patience. A scaled scout. Envy, to charity scape, thou a shot full, yeah. With pride, wrath, and envy, these devils, by downs dry, as comely king I descry, mankind to catch and to care. Flesh, frail and fresh, freely fed, with glutton, sloth, and lechery, man's soul thou slow. As a duke doughty, do thee to be dread, gear with thee, Gear thee with gears from top to the toe. Kith this day, thou art a king, freely fed. Glutton, slay thou abstinence with wicked woe. With chastity, thou lecher, be not overled. Sloth, beat thou business on buttocks blow. Do now thy craft in cost to be no. Worthy, witty, and wise, wonden in weed. Let covetise carpen, crying and greed. Here be bold bachelors' battles to bead. Mankind to tain as I trow. That ding duke that died on rude, this day my soul keep and safe. When mankind draws to good, behold what enemies he shall have. The world, the devil and flesh are wooed. To men they cast in a careful cave, bitter bales they brew and on brood, mankind in woe to welter and wave. Lordings, sooth to say, therefore each man beware of this, for while mankind clean is, his enemies shall temper him to done amiss, if they be moan any way. Omne gaudum exinterne cum vanitas termitone are dead insiderist. Therefore, lords, best now clear with armsteed and orison, for to done as our lord bad, 
stiffly withstand your temptation. With this foul fiend, I am near mad to battle a buskin him bound. Certes, I should be overlad, but that I am in this castle town with sin sore and smart, whoso will liven out of distress and leaden his life in cleanliness. In this castle of virtue and of goodness, him must have whole his heart. Delatari in domino et dabit tibi petitionis cordis tui. Ah, meekness, charity, and patience, primrose, playeth, parlizant, chastity, busyness, and abstinence. Mine hope, ladies, in you is lent. Suck a paramour sweeter than sense, rode as rose on ris errent. This day ye dieth a good defence. While mankind is in good intent, his thoughts are unhend. Mankind is brought into this wall in frailty to faden and fall. Therefore, ladies, I pray you all, help this day mankind. God that sitteth in heaven on high, save all mankind by sea and sand. Let him dwell in here and be us by, and we shall put to him helping hand. Yet forsooth never I sigh that any fault in us he found, but that we saved him from slin, sin's sly, if he would by us stiffly stand in this castle of stone. Therefore dread thee not, man's angel dear, if he will dwell in with us here, for seven sins we shall him wear, and his enemies each one. Now, my seven sisters sweet, this day falleth on us the lot, mankind, for to shield and shate fro deadly sin and shamely shot. His enemies strayin' in the street to spill man with spiteous spot. Therefore, our flowers let now fleet, and keep we him as we have heaped among us in this hall. Therefore, seven sisters sweet, let our virtues reign on rote. This day we will be man's boot against these devils all. This day the vayward will I hold, avaunt my banner, precious pride, mankind to cash to carries cold, bold battle now will I bide. Busk you boys on breed, all men that be with that be with me with withhold with there, withhold, yes, sorry. Both the young and the old, envy wrath ye boys bold, to round raps ye rape I read. Lynn, I think, superbia. So sorry, uh, I, I skipped down to what I thought my next line was and I've missed something. Ah. As arms, meekness, I bring thy bane, all with pride painted and pith. What sayest thou, Fator? Be my fair fane. What with robes round raid full right? Great gounts I shall thee gain to mar thee, meekness, with my might. No worldly wits here are wane. Lo, thy castle is all beset. Mothers, how shall we do? Meekness yield thee to me, I read. Mine arms in land is precious preed. Mine bold banner to thee I bead. Mother, what sayest thou there too? Against thy banner of pride and boast, a banner of meekness and mercy I put against pride. Well thou boast that shall shend thy careful cry. This meek king is known in every coast that was crucified on Calvary, when he came down for heaven host and lighted with meekness in Mary. This Lord thus lighted low. When he came from the Trinity into a maiden lighted he, and all was for to destroy thee, pride. This shalt thou know. Deposuit potentes de sede et exaltavit humiles. For when Lucifer to heaven fell, pride, thereof wert thou wert chosen, and thou, devil, with wicked will, in paradise trapped us with treason. 
So thou us bound in bales ill, this may I prove by right reason, till this duke that died on hill in heaven man might never have season. The gospel thus declared, for whoso low, him shall be high, therefore thou shalt not come in us nigh, and though thou be never so sly, I shall fell all thy fair. Que se exaltabat humiliabitur, etc. And Roth. Oh, sorry, is that Roth as well? Mm. Dame Patience, what sayst thou to Roth and I? Put mankind fro thy castle clear. Oh, I shall tap in at thy tire with stiff stones that I have here. I shall sling at thee many a vire and been avenged hastily. Thus, Beelzebub, our great sire, bade me brend thee with wildfire. Thou bitch black as coal. Therefore, fast, foul scout, put mankind to us out, or of me thou shalt have doubt, thou mother, thou moty hole. <laughs> and... Uh... It is Patientia, so uh, spelt slightly differently, uh, but that, I think that should be Lynn. I apologise, that's the speech prefix being slightly wrong. Sorry again, I was looking for Penitentia, which... Yes, it's a very slight uh, 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 spelling uh, uh, a variation that I have accidentally put in. Bro, I uh, doubt Christ me here this each day and all mankind, thou wretched wrath, wood and wild, shall see thee shen. Quira, quia ira vir justasium, de non operator, for Mary's son, weak and mild, rent thee up, wrote and rind, when he stood meeker than a child, and let boys beaten him and bind. Therefore, wretch, be still. For those pelours that gan him pose, he might have driven him to dross, and yet to cast in him on the cross, he suffered all here will. Thousands of angels he might have had who were roking him there full yearn, and yet to Dian he was glad, as us patients to teach him and learn. Therefore, boy, with thy bolstrous blood, bear away by fields fairn, for I will do as Jesus bad, wretch, wretches fro my one is wearing. And with a genial defense, if thou fond to come aloft, I shall thee catch fro this croft with these roses, fleet and soft, painted with patience. Out mine heart ginneth to break for charity that standeth so tout, stout. Alas, mine heart ginneth to reap. Yield up this castle, thou whore clout. It is mine office foul to speak, false slanders to bear about. Charity, the devil mought thee cheek, but I thee wrap with ruly rout. Thy targe for to tear, that let mankind come to us down, or I shall sh shatine to this castle town a full foul defamation. Therefore, this bow I bear. Though thou speak wicked and false fame, the worst shall I never do my deed. Who payeth falsely another man's name, Christ's curse he shall have to meed. Ve homini ille per quam scandalum wainit. Whoso will not his tongue tame, take it sooth as miscreed. Woe, woe to him and mickle shame, in holy writ uh, this I read. For ever thou art a shrew, though thou speak evil, 
I nay give a grease. I shall never do the worse at the last sooth verse. Certes himself shall show. Our lovely Lord without and lack gave example to charity when he was beaten blue and black for trespass that never did he. In sorry sin he had no take and yet for sin he bled bloody blee. He took his cross upon his back sinful man and all for thee thus he made defence envy with thy slanders thick i am put at my lord's prick i will do good against the wick and keep in silence what for belial's bones where about and chide ye have done ye boys all at once lanch done these mothers all three work rake to this wones the vaughnwood is granted me do these mothers to make and moans your doughty deeds now let's see dash him all to dags have do boys blow and black work these wenches woe and rack clarions crieth up at crake and blow your broad bags and the stage direction says they fight for a long time. So what we basically get is uh, three sets of grudge matches, pride versus humility. Um, and they throw some uh, some uh, stuff at each other. Uh, pride versus meekness, uh, as, uh, as actually named in the text. Uh, wrath versus patience and uh, envy versus charity. So reasonable, uh, reasonable matches there. We can assume that they've come down out of the castle to fight in the place and that, they, you know, we have... Um, and that this can go on, you know, it goes on for a while. So I this this had better have some decent choreo fight choreography going on here. Um, and also remember, uh, we knew know from uh, the uh, initial uh, notes in the text that... Um, uh, when it comes to ba uh, uh, Satan, he has gunpowder burning in pipes in his hands and his uh, uh, his uh, ears and his uh, uh, his ass when they go into battle. So uh, when the battle begins, and I love the way that Belial just goes, some um, get on with it, <laughs> stop all this yakking, go on, go and pu punch each other, um, Lois. Yeah, I mean the one thing we also know from the text is that is that the virtues are throwing flowers. I mean that's their weapons. So mm. it should be quite beautiful, actually. Uh, they must have masses of these things, though. I mean, presumably artificial ones. And uh, I don't know what the, the other guys are throwing, but it would be quite quite a spectacle. Yeah, some of them have got sabres, some of them have got bows and arrows. Uh, there's an awful lot of shooting uh, referenced, um, yeah. though with slightly slippery vowels. Uh, so sometimes it doesn't quite sound like that. Um, and... Um, yeah, this idea ha that the way you choreograph this is, you know, the, the, the virtues have to sort of, you know, s somehow they, 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 they win um, by using, I don't know, the power of the, the evil's own forces against them. It's some sort of, uh, you know, using flowers and street. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a lovely idea. I would no idea how you do it. Mm. Um, a massive leaf blower blowing petals at people um that kind of thing uh i you know i i, I like it um this is round one by the way more rounds to come um other thoughts uh helen yes i suppose it's possible that the flowers are um toxic to devils mm. so they are flowers and to the pure they are um, beautiful but if they touch the devils they burn yeah yeah ah you're being nice to me no um. <laughs> here i got you something it's for your birthday water. no um <laughs> you know how does meekness fight i mean it's just sort of going yes please hit me hit me it will only make me stronger um uh, sarah uh muted at the moment then I, Bryony. I, I feel there's a star wars analogy here um because because you know i mean i don't know what's happening in recent star wars universes but if you go back to the original films like you know one only ever uh brandished a, a lightsaber in defense 
you know, and you sort of used it to um, ward off the attacks of others. So I, I, I could imagine that, that, that Meekness and the rest of them, that they are able to fight and able to fight quite uh, competently, but they only ever do so in defence. You know, it's, I can imagine them forming like a, you know, like the Romans used to do, like a, like a shield or a wall around mankind and just kind of defending and defending and defending in a very kind of elegant and quite zen way. And, and then, um, and then, and then, when the others have run out of weapons, they just hand them a flower. They just like, yeah, you yeah. know, or like maybe the the flowers. I mean, I mean, obviously, if you were doing this on film, it, you could do all kinds of wonderful things with it. You couldn't do it on stage, but like, the, they throw the flowers, and the flowers hit the swords, and the swords just, yeah, disintegrate, uh, burn up, disintegrate. I mean, it, the, turn into petals. Like, yeah, exactly. There's this idea of like defense. I think uh, the defense in itself being quite mighty. You know, being quite a um a potent force it's just it's not it, it doesn't have to be an attack it can be a it can be a defense mm, love that briny then lynn i just like the idea of um belial kind of almost like the the fight promoter he's just he's just randomly there he's not in the fight he's just trying to egg it all on and get everybody more excited about it and presumably so that they can all be swearing on his bones as well Mm, yeah, it's because uh, they're his. Are they his fighters? Because we've got various sins are associated with different uh, promoters, as it were, in this analogy. So we've got the first. This is Satan's uh, bout, um, and in a moment we'll get um, uh, the uh, flesh, and uh, then I think we get Mundus. I think that's the the order of uh, of service. Uh, so you know, we, it, it, this this isn't one pitch battle; it's actually a series of pitch battles, which makes the possibility of doing a, 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 a simplified version of this play possible. Because obviously, you know, once you've got seven deadly sins and seven virtues, the the cast size starts getting quite big very quickly. But if you break all the fights down into their component parts, suddenly the play becomes manageable uh, in a way that it didn't before. Um, he said, just thinking ahead now. Uh, uh, Lynn. I was I was just going to say when Sarah brought up Star Wars, I thought she was going to uh, say something about the fact that stormtroopers with these blasters can't hit the broadside of a barn. <laughs> <laughs> that's sort of like you know, running joke. There's lots of memes about how, how you know, stormtroopers can't. They, they have terrible aim. So <laughs> maybe... Um, pride and and all the rest like they're really powerful but they're but they don't know how to focus that that their their strength because they're just klutzes or idiots or whatever mm. yes i think i think that that there, there is uh there's something there uh, i like other thoughts before we uh, do our last section of the uh, of the session uh sarah again and i don't know if other people were waving or, or just uh, just hands were flapping i don't know uh sarah it's it's just a silly thing, but I love that stage direction because you quite often get they fight in you know in an early play, and it means you know it they fight stands in for a really complex fight, and here we've got they fight for a long time, and it's yeah. like wow okay <laughs> that's a big battle <laughs> yeah to be to be fair that is a translation of 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 the latin so it, you know it's it's a long battle or you know how you wish to translate it i may have allowed that to sound more comic than than it is uh, reasonably should be but yes it's supposed to be a big bit of business i think that's uh, that's the point this isn't just something there they go pata 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 bing um it it goes on a while um Okay, so um, um, we can we can say that uh, uh, there there is a response from Superbia, Nvidia, and Ira, uh, Ira here. Uh, they come away from the fight slightly worse for wear. I think it's fair to say. Let's hear the voices um, as they uh, they stagger away from the battlefield. Ouch! My proud back is bent. Meekness hath me forbeat. Pride with meekness is for shent. I wail and weep with wounds wet. I am beaten in the head. My pride adown is driven. So sharply meekness hath me shriven that I may no longer live in. My life is me bereaved. All mine en enmity is not worth a fart. I shit and shake all in my shet. 
charity that sore swart with fair roses mine head gan break i bred the malander with worthy words and flowers sweet charity maketh me so meek i dare not neither cry nor creep not a shot of slander I, wrath, may sing in weary woe. Patience me gave a sorry dint. I'm all beaten, black and blue, with a rose that on road was rent. My speech is almost spent. Her roses fell on me so sharp that mine head hangeth as an harp. I dare neither cry nor carp. She is so patient. Go hence. Ye do not worth a turd. Full foul you all for. Yearn, yearn, let fall on board, Sir Flesh, with thine eye sour, For care I cuck and cower, Sir Flesh, with thine company, Yearn, yearn, make a cry, help, We have no felony, That this day may be our. War, war, let man's flesh go to, I come with a company. Have do, my children, now have do, Glutton, sloth, and lechery. Ick of you winneth a shoe, let not mankind win maestry, let sling him in a foul slow, and fond to feff him with folly, doth now well your deed, ye may let see how ye shall gin mankind to tempt and to deadly sin, if ye must this castle win, hell shall be your mead. Wah, oh, Sir Glutton shall make a smeek against this castle I vow, Abstinence! Though thou bleak, I look on thee with bitter brow. I have a faggot in my neck to set in mankind on allow. My foul lay shall thou not let, I vow to God as I trow. Therefore put him out here! In measling gluttony, with good meats and drinks try, I nourish my sister lechery, till man runneth on fear. Thy meats and drinks are unthendy, when they are out of measure take. They make in men mad and out of mend, and work in him both woe and rake. That for thy fear, though thou here kindle, certes I shall thy well a slake, with bread, with breed that brought us out of hell, and on the cross suffered rake. I mean the sacrament that each blissful bread that hung on hill till he was dead shall temper so mine maiden hedge that thy purpose shall be spent. In abstinence this bread we brought, certus mankind and all for thee. Of forty days ate he not and then was nailed to a tree. Cum jejuna set, exul diebus, et cetera. Example us was betaught, in so soberness he bade us be. Therefore mankind shall not be caught. Gluttony with thy degree, the sooth thou shalt see. To nourish fair though thou be fall, abstinence it shall withdraw, till thou be shet under shaw and fain for to flee. Thou chastity, thou foul scout, this ilka day here thou shalt die. I make a fair in man's tout that launceth up as any lie. These cursed coals I bear about, mankind in teen for to tie. Men and women hath no doubt with pissing pocus for to play. I bind him in my bonds, I have no rest, so I row with men and women as I trow. Till I, lechery, be set on a low in all mankind's lands. I, chastity, have power in this place, thee, lechery, to bind and beat. Maiden Mary, well of, gr well of grace, shall quench that foul heat. Mater et virgo extingue carnalis concupiscentius. Our Lord God made mad thee no space when his blood strayed in the street. For this castle he did thee chase when he was crowned with thorns great and green. To dreary death when he was dieth, and boys did him great despite. 
In lechery had he no delight, and that was right well seen. At Our Lady I lear my lesson, to have chased life till I be dead. She is queen, and beareth the crown, and all was for her maidenhead. Therefore go for this castle town, lechery, now I thee rid, for mankind gettest thou naught down to sol to solian him with to soilen him with sinful seed, in care thou wouldst him cast, and if thou come up to me, Truly thou shalt beaten be with the yerd of chastity, while my life may last. Where war I delve with a spade, men call me the Lord so slow. Godly grace I spill and shade, from the water of grace this ditch I foe. Ye shullen come right now, by this ditch dry, by banker's breed. Thirty thousand that I well know, in my life lovely I lead. The head living, sitting at the ale, three men's songs to sing and loud, then towards the church for to crowd. Thou busyness, thou boiling bound, I brew thee to thine bale. Ah, good men, be war now all, of slug and sloth, this foul thief. To the soul he is bitterer than gall, wrote he is of mickle mischief. God's service that leadeth us to heaven hall, this lord in, for to letten us is leaf. Whoso will shriven him of his sins all, he putteth this brethel to mickle mischief, mankind he that miscarried. Men man done no penance for him this, near shrive him when they done amiss, but ever he would in sin I wist that mankind were tarried. Therefore he maketh this dyke dry, to put mankind to distress. He maketh deadly sin a ready way into the castle of goodness. But with tain I shall him tain. Through the help of heaven empress, with my bees he shall obey, and other occupations more and less, I shall scape him to shond. For whoso while sloth put down with beads and with orison, or some honest occupation as book to have in hand, nunc lege, nunc hora, nunc disque, nunc labora. Hey, for Belial's bones, the king, whereabouts stand you? Day, caitiffs, led be your cakeling, and rapid routs of array. Gluttony, thou foul, Gaddling, slee abstinence, if thou may, lechery with thy working, to chastity make a wicked array, a little throw, and while we fight for our right, in beams bright, let blasts blow. And they fight again, and we can assume that the bad guys do not win, because... Ow, glutton, down I drive, abstinence hath lost my mirth. Sir flesh, I shall never thrive, I do not worth the devil's dirt. I may not live and long, I'm all beaten top and tail. With abstinence will I no more dale, I will gone couch quail at home in your gong. Out on chastity, by the rude, she hath me dashed and so drenched. Yet have she the curse of God, for all my fear the queen hath quenched. For all my fire the queen hath quenched. For fear I fall and faint. In hard ropes mote she a bride. Here dare I not long abide. Somewhere my head I would hide, as an urchin that were shent. Out, I die, lay on water, I swoon. I sweat, I faint, I drowl. In queen with a pitter patter, hath also also dashed my scalded skull. It is as soft as wool, or have I have here more scarce? I shall leap away by lurking lace. There may my bollocks bathe and lichen at the fall. Yea, the devil speed you all the pack. For sorrow I mourn on the mow. I cop, I cry, I cower, I cack, I fret, I fart, I basil fowl. I look like an owl. Now, Sir World, 
Whatso it cost, help now, all this we have lost. All our fare is not <laughs> worth a thost that maketh me to mowl. Oh, covetice, ban your avaunt, here comes the battle, noble and new. For sith thou wert a little font, covetice, that hast been so true, have do that damsel, do her daunt. Bitter bales thou her brew, the medis boy I thee grant, the gallows of Cornwick to hang an on new, that would thee well before. Have done, Sir Covetice, work on the best wise. Do mankind come and arise for yon virtues all. So the world calling on the the last of the uh, the platform holders uh, calling on their uh, the last of the seven deadly sins to uh, uh, to go for it. This fight seems to be different because it seems to be a water fight. Now there is a ditch that in theory has water in it, so it might be that all of the uh, the sins here get got dunked. Um, but you know maybe there's buckets of water. Uh, there's there's some sort of uh, hosepipe affair. Uh, such such machines are not impossible, um, uh, though like everything in this production, rather hard work I'd imagine. So yeah, uh, it, they, they seem to be quite wet. This so it seems to be a universal thing. So maybe it's flowers, water. Uh, I don't know what other elements they could use uh, against them, Lois. Yeah, well, a lechery definitely is coming in with, what, hot coals, uh, something fiery. I don't know whether the others are. I couldn't quite work out what they had. Mm. But uh, they might all have something flaming, torches, mm. I don't know. So they've got something to be put out. So, yeah, uh, yeah that, that, that makes sense. Um, so, again, it's something that, you know, if you've got smoke and fire and water, it's something that you can see from a distance. Mm -hmm. It works on that spectacular sense again. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's... there's. It has to be said, you know, the, the vices keep their speeches quite short and quite quick, and it has to be said the virtues do not. Um, and I has to be so the the balance there is is slightly annoying me actually. I'm slowly going. There's a little too much from the virtues. I know the virtues should have the last word, etc. But um, the the lack of balance is slightly is slightly uh, irking me, um, as it were. Uh, eh, other thoughts about this this particular fight sequence, these particular oaths and threats um, that go between these vices and virtues. Um, I noted a few things, but I'll, I'll, I'll see what the room has first. Sometimes I say all the things, and that's that 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 doesn't help discussion. And then I'll allow awkward pauses. It's fine. Uh, I see, uh, Alan. Yeah, I mean, Helen put a question in chat about whether Urchin is Hedgehog. I actually viewed it possibly in the modern meaning of a young lad. Yeah, that's what I thought. Which would also work. Yeah. Um, and I must admit, I had the bad idea that uh, g given that it ends in duckings, you know, he's falling into water. Yeah, I can't find where it actually was. So, um, about a page it. back. Yeah, the end of Luxurious speech just before it. Oh right! Oh wait, way back. Um, I remember uh, seeing it, and uh, but I, I didn't make. Yes, yeah, it well, it's after the fight. Hmm. Oh, it's in there, is it? Um. Yeah, it's the end of the speech. Belt I R. Oh yeah, no, it could be. It could be hedgehog because it's about uh, the mine head. I would hide, so it's like a, a hedgehog curling itself into a ball. Yeah. So that does work. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, urchin is is mm. sometimes used for hedgehog. Yes, yeah, it is. that is. I mean, I know that is the main meaning of it. There, it just seemed to me so perfect as mm. for a child that someone had bawled out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, e either would work, and yeah, mm. why not? You know, but uh, it's it's certainly picked up pace in this last little bit once they've actually started getting into the fighty stuff. Well, mm. that's the thing is that you, you, you've gone for we, it, it has different sort of pacing and rhythm depending on which section we're in. You know, we started today with, you know, the good people and the good people will tend to be much more uh, on, a, on a, a, a calm level. And it's uh, well, that followed on from a certain amount of sin business. 
So, you know, it, it does seem to the players deliberately structured to go from, from different energies and different pacings uh, as it goes on. Um, and it's pacing it out here. So we get a set of three people fighting, a set of three people fighting in a different way. And then we get the boss fight at the end. Um, so um, uh, as, as we send in Avarice, um, uh, Covetice, uh, to do... Um, to do the uh, the heavy lifting here to see uh, whether he can persuade mankind to come down and whether that happens you'll find out next time i'm sure lois yeah the uh sloth speech is really quite interesting i mean he's got this spade and he's trying to get the water of grace out of the ditch i think i mean this this uh, moat or whatever it is then has water in it i can't quite work out where everybody is and what they're doing but he's definitely trying to i think create a, a side of uh, almost divert the water and mm. make the ditch dry. And then he also speaks about, he, he knows 30,000 people that would rather sit around singing three men's songs than go to church. Uh, mm. I don't, and, it's one of the, the more picturesque bits anyway. Yeah, and it's a big question as to where, because the, uh, the logic of it being a moat around the castle would suggest that the ditch is, is, is an inner thing. It's not part of the outer structure. Um, and that... That changes very much the dynamic of how you interpret the diagram, um, which we've been deliberately not talking about too much. So if that, if that's actually a more a, a moat um, around the castle, that that you know if that makes sense as an action, you go to get into the castle, you want to deal with the the the, uh, the moat around it, and the idea of one of the sins coming in with a bucket and uh, and uh, you know or a spade, uh, trying to trying to scoop it out <laughs> is quite nicely comic. Actually, I quite like that. Mm. Teaspoon. Yeah, um, a sieve. Um, <laughs> Bryony. <laughs> I wish I had something more intelligent and highbrow to point out. Oh, no, I I'm just... really... I, 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 I have to say, I, I do have, there's far too much highbrow stuff going on around here. Okay, you good. Know, I, I, because I want more. I was struck by the uh, bollock bathing line, and it just strikes me that actually, in, in today's society that i would i would consider that a virtue personally <laughs> and one that not everybody has but it's sloth who's so seemingly it you know if, if it was too clean if you're spending too much time cleaning yourself is that is that a sign that you're lazy and i don't know is, is that a bad thing i don't know indulgence it was, it's, it's over there we just uh, it's just because they're so bruised and, and damaged so presumably got need in the happy sack quite a lot um in some fashion um i i i, I don't know how that actually would have happened I, I i don't see the virtues necessarily doing that themselves it must have accidentally happened in a collision with one of the other vices i i don't know maybe maybe Satan's let out so much smoke from his ass that nobody can see what they're doing anymore. I mean, there's there's so many options here, um, you know, for the scale of this. Um, no, it's a really good question. Balox uh, being, a, 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 yes, a, a, a turn of phrase we have uh, later on as well. And we have it in a Robin Hood. Um, Fry Tuck mentions his Balox um, in a very different context. Uh, Tamara. Also, not all that intelligence, but I couldn't... First of all, I got a little bit confused um, with who's fighting who and what's going on. Um, but I think there's tons of potential. And also, I couldn't help but picture it as an anime. Mm, it's all yes. I could see. It's all I could see is, is, is an anime. <laughs> Oh no, I really like that, and uh, yeah, it would work really nicely as that. Um, yes, so I, I think also the visual element is we're lacking here, obviously, because we're reading a text and the, the character names are all in Latin, which doesn't help. Um, is uh, you know we have that visual dimension. You, we we'll know who Gluttony is by just one look at them, and you know we'll know who most of these vices are by by the way they're costumed. The virtues possibly less so. The virtues are slightly harder in that sense and at the time they would have had more conventions uh, presumably to make it really clear who who individuals are uh alan i think actually the fight scenes one way of handling it would be in fact for as we've seen in other plays later on is effectively for the baddies to be so bloody incompetent that most of it is actually blue on blue damage yeah you know, it's, you know, the the old gag of, you know, 
turn, turns around quickly and swipes his next door neighbour with his club. Mm. Um, yeah, and the, 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 they're hitting each other, and then in a, 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 a moment when they're 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 at the point of their their maximum in, injury and in, in, uh, insult to injury, that's when the water go, is dropped on their heads. Mm. You know, it's it's that kind of thing. Um, I yeah, I, I like the idea that they're falling into the ditch a lot. Um, uh, you know, as they're trying to get into the castle. If this is a more dynamic trying to get up walls kind of thing, I mean, depending on how physical your actors could be uh that could be incredibly dynamic if you've got proper acrobats doing stuff here and if they're all masked or similar you could have stunt doubles effectively as well for certain bits um so you could you could really do some go to town with the the visual potential of this um other thoughts um we are running out of time i'm not necessarily going to go around the room for final thoughts um uh, I'll just sort of collect any final thoughts that we've got here. Um, you know, there there is um, room for manoeuvre and uh, and a, sm a small market in terms of uh, producing medieval drama, and uh, you know these these things do do pop up, but they do always they usually pop up in very specific circumstances, and there's always a bit of a problem about what you're doing with a religious text um, and the morality of that, as opposed to the morality that we may espouse today. So there's always those sort of questions. Um, uh, but you know, in terms of its theatrical potential, so far we're doing very well. Um, but there are still many problems. Many problems we haven't necessarily actually mentioned so far. Uh, Lynn, yeah, I wanted to, uh, to kind of circle back to Bryony's observations about you know in the first session the um, the the bits with the the sins, the vices seducing mankind were kind of more fun and more interesting than the virtues trying to put him on the the, the straight and narrow. You know, I think that's just baked into the this religious tradition. 200 and something years later, Milton was still struggling with this and being accused of being of the devil's party without knowing it, which I, do, I don't think he was. Mm. But, um, but, you know, in the 1660s, it was still more fun to write the devil than to write the Messiah or God. It was just like, oh, heaven is ho-hum and, and hell is really interesting. That's just kind of, that's the nature of the being, as mm. were. Yes, and that's why uh, Satan and his friends are always infinitely detachable to go into alternative uh, shows. You know, I we've talked about you know doing some of our live events where taking bits and pieces that we like. I cannot at the moment imagine doing a compilation of the virtues. Um, I, I <laughs> it's not the material that immediately makes ah oh, this will make an excellent ninety minutes worth of uh, of because uh, they'll not come out they come back for the after the interval. Um, <laughs> Whereas Satan, yeah, there's so many potentials and, you know, uh, vices. Uh, uh, there's so many potentials. Um, and it's the fact that the virtues always are, have more to say. Um, whereas I feel that, you know, maybe to dial that back. I said one of the, there was one of the virtues or, or one of the, uh, the good angels had a, uh, had a real go at someone earlier. Oh, we were talking when um, mankind... Um, comes uh is, is being convinced or comes down and basically goes now don't you turn back because otherwise you're going to hell and you're going to burn in hell for all eternity and really really goes postal on it uh, on him and it's it's um yeah it's not all we're lovely lovely and light actually there's something quite stern about these characters at times as well ah uh, hmm. alan must admit i've had a thought running through my head that Probably it would be easiest to do this in a site-specific manner. And two potential venues have occurred to me, one of which I think you all know, Rob, the other will be known to others. Um, the one that's more generally known is I could see this being done in the area around Clifford's Tower in York, you know, where you've got a Mott and Bailey-style um, castle. And I was thinking a local one to us is Castle Hedingham. Where again you've got a, a Mott and Bailey type setup. Hmm. Trying to remember the the nature of the terrain around it, though. Um, Large green sward around it at, hmm. at Teddingham. 
Um, it's interesting because you know it's presented as something uh, effectively the, the the primary area is round. Um, I, I have to say I, I would quite like the idea if I was doing it to give myself at least one corner that one can work towards, as it were, that doesn't have an audience at it. It's mm. it's uh, it, it just 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 uh, just one of the compass points maybe squidge around a bit. Um, so it's not wholly equal. I know that it would ruin the stage picture, but it just makes one's life just that tiny bit easier. Mm. Uh, Helen. Talking about the stage picture, um, is the provenance of this completely secure? The, 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 the drawing? Yeah. It's all, it's all of a piece. I'm fairly certain of that. And, and is, it, is it some Clark's fanciful thought about how I might stage it? it or is it something that some practical theatre person has actually done? Well, it's, it's difficult. It depends on your opinion of what the, 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 the original production or productions were trying to do. It, it seems that it is a, an attempt to... Um, it could be an attempt to sell the, this text as a thing you can practically stage yourself and therefore... It may be based on an actual production, or it may have got confused in the translation, to you know, uh, to being copied for somebody else, or it could be a copy of a production that exists. You know, it's 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 slightly tricksy. Because for a practical theatre, it strikes me as being pretty insane. Oh yeah, I think it's 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 wild, um, but it doesn't feel impractical. It's just we don't have all the details. Um... Lois, then Sarah. Yeah, I mean, I wonder if they, they did have a specific location in mind. Weren't there the ruins of some amphitheaters at one point? I think there was a place near Shrewsbury that, where somebody was actually doing plays and as late as the 16th century, because I think at one point uh, Elizabeth was actually supposed to be going to this. Uh, so it would have been, uh, I mean, nothing like this, as far as I know, is still there. But, you know, there there were, of course, at one time, quite a lot of uh, Roman amphitheatres. And I suppose some of the ruins were still available. I, I don't know. I just wondered if they were thinking of something like that. Mm. Mm. I say it depends on where the initial auspices are. The, the text seems to be East Anglian, uh, but that might be just it got semi-translated by an East Anglian clerk in that sense. Um, obviously, we've got round structures that are more associated with the West. Um, than, than we do with the East. So it may be a mixture of those things. Um, Sarah? Yeah, I, I said this yesterday, but it was after we'd finished recording. Um, so I just, I just wanted to sort of say it while we were recording. Like, I really, I can really imagine this working in an amphitheatre. And I mean, I'm, I'm quite a visual person, so I can kind of see it all playing out in my head. And the way I'm picturing it is, um, there's a there's a Motton Bailey like a tower on a little mound in the centre of the amphitheatre with the moat around it. Then you've got the audience going up the sides of the amphitheatre, and then you could have the you could have the seven deadly sins and the world and and you know what have you the angels all round the top of the amphitheatre, and then the virtues could come out from the castle and sort of take mankind into the castle over the water into the castle and then the the vices could come down mm. through the audience and then the battle happens in the center and that way the audience can see they can see above but they can see below they can see absolutely everything and it also gets around your the, the thing that you mentioned rob of like having to cheat one of the one of the compass points because even though it would be in the circle there would be somewhere there would be the the exit for the amphitheater so there would be a point that you could drive people towards if you know to get them off if you needed to mm. and I, I could just i can imagine that being really spectacular yeah because the uh, that, that that that's um one of the things about the that that, that the, where you're placing the audience it could be that they're surrounding it. It could be that they're, they're, they are also in the middle and that the, there's a promenade element. And that it could be both uh, rather than either or. Um, and, yeah, that arrangement, I think, would work very well. I, I think that's plausible. And, you know, there would be some line of sight issues occasionally. Um, but there'd be very the kind of minor thing that you just go, well, it's tough. Move to the side. Lean, lean, lean across a bit. You'll be fine. Uh, Helen, I think, and then any other final thoughts uh, before we close? It, it, it was just, I just wondered if anyone had found Canwick 
because that's a place name that came up in Munda's last speech. Uh, I haven't. The gallows of Canwick to hang on on you. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm sure there are loads of Canwicks. I will have to look that one up another time. Um, but I, someone may know of uh, that being a thing. Uh, we will mm. uh, we'll see if that question can be answered uh, in, in a public place and on. Um, all that remains is to thank all these wonderful readers uh, for their time and their patience. This is not a, uh, this is not an easy process um, if you're not familiar with the, the, the party quirks and also a script that is uh, it, effectively this is this is a proofing process by trying to figure out what is the best approach to uh, compromise between original spelling and uh, and and updating uh, without going all the way uh, towards uh, modernization so uh, all that remains to thank all the wonderful readers thank you very much everyone and goodbye bye